right. Somebody out there give me a confirmation that you can hear my voice, please. Anybody? Let me know. TW Industries says thumbs up GIF, meaning you can hear. Robot Dharma says I can hear. Fantastic. I don't know what just happened. That was crazy. I've had real solid connections lately, and I've had, you know, no dropouts and like good quality video and audio going through. Today, something is going on, which I'm going to have to troubleshoot. I hope that uh, we don't have that problem happen again. Let's let's see if Jason is still audible to everybody. Hello, can you hear me? Hello, my chat's not working. I I hear you. I see oh, you. Well, that's that's what matters. So can thanks for else hear me? <laughs> yeah, can so anybody... thanks for everybody for uh for putting up with this uh, momentary uh, uh pause. I guess we lost a little bit of time, but not too much. And uh, let's you know, fingers crossed, double time here. <laughs> and Mick Patterson just in the chat said it was slightly ironic. I agree. Also, I'm not going to tell you guys what that uh, Be Right Back music was. I want one of you. I hopefully, you, yes, it's a video game, but let's see how on top of your video game history. Um, I'm going to play it for you guys one more time. Anyway, if you any anyone who who played video games in the early to mid '80s should know, or be able to figure out eventually where that music comes from. All right. So anyway, we were talking about minimal. We got interrupted, mm. and we ended up with the most minimal thing of all, which was silence. It was like, wait, who's the composer that do, that does the the silent stuff? Is it, is it uh, Cage? John Cage. Cage. Had, I sample him all. I sample him all the time. I, I sample him all the time too. I, all, there's a little bit of John Cage in all of my work. You just, you know, you really have to listen carefully for it. All right. The royalties so, we owe. Exactly. I know. I, I don't know how we're getting away with it after all this time. Uh, Tyra White guesses Super Mario fight scene. Uh, I mean, it is sort of Mario esque, but it's before that. It's definitely Japanese, though. That's another clue. Um, as far as like who designed the game. Uh, Mage Prometheus says, "Minimal techno is newfangled in my mind as I'm still into happy hardcore." Now that would be a that would be a fun game. Let's turn a minimal track into happy hardcore. What would that take? But that's actually a little bit along the lines of what I wanted to do today was hang out with Jason. You know, talk a little bit about what minimal is or isn't, or what it means to Jason and what it means to me. Um, my mind is that uh, minimal is an adjective more than a, a genre, and it can be applied to a lot of different things. And even tracks that are really busy and crazy and change all the time may have minimal or minimalistic elements to them, right? And then another... For the new kids, it was actually a genre name for oh, a bit. Well, and it is. I mean, I may have my opinion it about... it still is, yeah. It still is. I mean, if you, you go look on a, you know, like Beatport or whatever, and you look at minimal, it's like, it's a genre. It's a section in the shop. And you file music under it. And people describe their music that way. Um, so uh, we have another guest. Tyra says, I don't know, Zelda. Eh, it's not It's not Nintendo. All right. The company that made this game is called Namco, I think. If that's a clue for any like video game nerds out there. And uh, it, it's a space shooting kind of a game. So, And it's not Space Invaders. It's after that. I already feel like I've given away too much. So, and I know as a kid, I played this game a lot. So it's stuck in my brain. Um, anyway, so getting back to what we're doing today, I've got Ableton Live here. And oh, let's switch over to the scene and let's make sure everybody can still see Jason. Hi, Jason. You're right there. And um, I, I already was sort of playing around with this concept earlier on my own. But what I'm doing is asking Jason to sort of help me out with this. And I'm, I'm really just starting with something just dead boring. Like, I mean, other than the fact that... The, oh, that's already too funky. The, yeah, I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, let's get rid of that syncopated. All right. Oh, uh, there you go. There you go. I just realized... All right, we're done here. We're done. We're done. This is it. This is minimal techno right there. 
So <laughs> anyway, the idea is that I'm going to start doing like a simple sort of generic minimal techno-y kind of a thing and then we're just going to totally screw it up and make it not minimal anymore. So that's that's where the that's where the literal title of this episode is, you know, how to not make minimal. So Jason's going to help me make this oh, not minimal. All right. Indeed. So, and Now Another thing that's going on today or this week actually is uh, we're having a giveaway from Arturia. We're giving away their DX7V, you know, their emulation, their recreation and expansion of the original Yamaha DX7 uh, FM synthesizer. And um, I'm going to use that a little bit today to make some noise with and, you know, play around with tweaking FM to make cool techno noises or whatever. So that's sort of the side, the side project. So let's go in here and find a DX7V and throw it on a track and make a MIDI clip and put in a really boring offbeat rhythm. Sorry, Jason, hold on. I'm going to have to have you uh, repeat that because uh, say that again, Jason. What's the difference between minimal techno and tech house? Good question. Hey, chat, what's the difference between minimal techno and tech house? I want to see what these people have to say about that. I'm always kind of confused about tech house in a way. I mean, I know that's another one that's like... Another that, abused that's genre. A, that's a, it's house music where we're using tech as an as a adjective. All right, so we got the oompa beat going on, and there's like a million generic... You know, at the height of minimal techno's popularity, there's like m just millions of tracks that go, mm -boom, mm -boom, mm, you know, and like, so that's where I'm starting. I'm following the, the cliches. All right. But then, you know, I can go in here into the DX7 and tweak it a little bit. Actually, let's go to a default. Right. That's just a pure sine wave now. All right. Still minimal. Still very minimal. Actually, and shorten up that release a little bit. There we go. There's our donk. Mm. Actually, that's better. I like it. I'm going to bring the that modulator down an octave to give it a little more. All right. So Jason, tell me, what do I need to do to make this not minimal anymore? What should we do to well, br break this? You can make that funky thing, give it a lot of delay, a lot of. Wouldn't that be just slap. dubbing it out though and making it like dub minimal techno? Yeah, like, there you, but that's, there but you. I, we want less, less minimal. <laughs> we want more. Oh, you need more stuff. We need more stuff, right? I need to like, I mean, more elements, more layers, or more you frequencies to, in the sound. Fi fill in those pockets. Fill in the pockets. All, there's too much all, space, right? There's too just, much like. This is ninety percent air. So too many, not enough notes. All right. Yeah, not enough stuff. All right, so I'm just, I'm just gonna randomly. Oh, there you go. You already, you already screwed it. Up. That's too complicated. But then, then it. But we want to not be minimal, right? Yeah, it's it's not minimal already. But it also kind of. It is still I kind mean, of. <laughs> well, that's that's why you're here. You could have taken that groove and just brought in another sound. Just one more sound already would have unminimalized it. All right, but I really want to go overboard with this. Oh, you already you already did. It's already not minimal. It's already not minimal. It's. That's I good. Don't even All know right, let's. There you go. Give it. <laughs> It can't just be mud because that's kind of minimal. You got to maximal frequencies, you know. You know what I want to do? I want to do some some pitch modulation. I'm going to do uh, and I'm just going to use the pitch bend. Mm. If it yeah. changes a lot, it's already not minimal. This is the most minimal non minimal you could do. It's just it's only one sound, but it's going too much. 
All right, now let's make it. All right, so I need to. This is always busy a thing. Mole. This is yeah, it's busy mole. This is. <laughs> I, I hope this experiment works. Everybody, just be patient. Well, you're inventing a new genre. I mean, how bad could that be? All right, so I just put. This is a thing that I always notice with synths. Like uh, people uh, right away forget to go in and adjust the the pitch bend uh, amount. So we need to find out where is that. Okay, here it is under under the overview under global. There's a pitch bend range. There we go. Oh well, now now you're cool again. You get the glide. Yep. Now we got the pitch bend. We're jacking now. May not be right. minimal, but it'll work in Chicago. Yeah. Th now we're getting kind of jacky Chicago-y. Like this is kind of the stuff that you would hear like influencing early. Uh, Neil Landstrom records and like old DJ Hyperactive and that uh, kind of era. And then, you, and then you have like it your would Detroit. still be minimal. Your kind of Detroit jacking minimal stuff like Dan Bell, like the old DBX stuff. And, and then our friend Todd Sines, um, who did a lot of X, the X track stuff. I mean, this is kind of that world, which I love. And, and it's kind of, let me just pause here for a second. Like early on when minimal kind of in techno first became a thing, it was kind of like a reaction to intense overdone ravey crazy madness and like hardcore and gabber and hard trance and hard acid and everything was just so in your face kind of in a similar way to how like the more sort of in your face egregious edm stuff in the last few years you know like the kind of bro steppy whatever that that's all just sharp noises all the time and it's getting and if we're so a history lesson john yeah, we yeah. should mention that this also kind of dovetailed with uh people bringing out gear and playing live sure and like and I agree. When you're making live techno, it it really helpful to be on the more stripped down minimal side. How, how much gear do you got? How many hands do you have? Right, you, know, you can only do so really much hard simultaneously. To it. Although I got to say, when when you ninety four ninety five when you and Dietrich and Taylor would go out as Pino on a nine and bring all that gear. That's because we were three people. That was crazy. We that was six hands. that was beyond uh, minimal. Hands, that was definitely know. like you were starting with like this like broken down kind of. Yeah, uh, simple uh, groove, and then it would just go mental. You guys would go mental. Well, we with were what inspired you did. by the by the one person, you know, one person in '94 with as much gear as they could possibly handle. There were people like uh, Hyperactive or uh, Mark Verbos or people who went out by themselves or or Abe Duquet. Sure. You know, if, with the gear that you ha one person could ha bring in '94, you couldn't get overproduce you couldn't get you know dense noise right and um and that was inspirational that was like a really cool thing and then it and then i think that impacted the records because people wanted to spin like that too i agree let's check back into the chat um let's see it looks like the first person to get the right uh game that that music comes from was actually tire white galaga it is. It is oh, from. Man, it's my favorite game, but I didn't hear it because. Yeah, was, it was, was like like it. ending music, or it was like uh, like a high score music. You know, when you get to the, if you're done with your game and you're putting your name in on the top, you know, the top players on the game, it would play that da 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 da. That's that's what it's from. So she got it there first. Swing. Also, props to I can't even pronounce this. Bulnod Tharu. Is that did I say that right? Or I, my eyes are crossing I'm trying to read this far away on my monitor, but. Uh, uh, also called out Galaga. So definitely both of you props for uh, for recognizing that music. Um, let's see. We got uh, Robot Dharma Boots Cats Boots Cats. Definitely got the Boots Cats going on in this beat. That's all That's all it's got besides this weird squiggly bass line thing. Um, we also, let's see. Bulnod or Benad Tharu also says UK Garage House dash Tech House. No, I would say that's a very different thing. Definitely garage and tech house are. I mean, I'm sure there must be some similar production elements in the beats, but like the whole overall vibe is is different. So tech um, house is generally like what it became, and and also where it started is minimal in the adjective sense. But the the house is the important word. You know, it's got the feel. It sure. should have. It should have had a more house feel, whereas minimal techno. Is leans more on the techno. Sure. Well, and then so nowadays, it's about the feel, but you know, and now the, the feels are all lost, and <laughs> so I don't know what the difference is anymore. Yeah, well, but that's that's where the difference was then. 
Well, sure. And like nowadays there's like, you know, minimal house is its own distinct genre. And I would say back in the 90s, it was much more mixed up. I was actually, you know, the, this week when I was thinking about the show, I went again, I went on Beatport and I was like looking through that minimal section to see what had been classified as that. And all the stuff on the top 10 does not sound like minimal to me at all. It's more like groovy. It's more like melodic techno. Now that's a, a current genre, but like slower and groovier, right? It's sort of like, you know, melodic techno and and like deep tech or whatever minimal on it is on 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 beatport it's a little more like the same thing at different with what like what you're saying one feels more techy and a little more energetic and more futuristic and the other and feels more laid back and vibey and groovy like like deeper house music does so we're not doing too, any of that today we are too much not music making is definitely not minimal we are you know? and maybe i could have been more specific like how not to make like beatport minimal or something well, we like gotta that. get back to we're this definitely not action. doing it well yeah um and uh you're gonna need another element because you, you're just producing a really good minimal track here yeah we've got it no matter the, what you do with this sound it's well, just I wanna, three sounds i want to so. go into the chat here lush interpolation says saturate all the frequencies and i'm like yeah just distort everything and it is so not minimal anymore that's another thing like a lot of the music we hear is minimal is very clean and pristine and spacious but once you start filling it up and making it dense and bright it definitely doesn't really sound minimal anymore right so i guess space and the time between things has a lot to do with with minimalism in in, in music doesn't it um the space the space and how it changes in subtle ways uh all right so you can put a lot of reverb on it and all of a sudden uh, again, yeah, dense. putting tons of reverb on everything is definitely going to make it less minimal for sure. So it's all—it's not just about the groove and the style. It's also about like the how sounds are designed and mixed. You know, like you can make a track with three elements and minimally it's like compositionally minimal with three elements, but the sounds themselves may be completely blown out and taking up the whole space. Uh, all right. Uh, and then Nacho mentions, Nacho from 343, uh, mentions to him the definition of minimal techno were the initial Michael Meyer compact records. Sure. Throw Hey, uh, Nacho, throw a link in the chat so people can check out what you're talking about. And I'm going to play some beats here and make this not minimal anymore or less, more, more minimal, less minimal, less minimal, more maximal. So let's take that uh, suggestion from Lush Interpolation and just blow this sound out with some distortion. And actually, I'm going to do it with the drums. Actually, I already did. It is not minimal anymore. It is hardcore. You filled up the space. <laughs> I filled up the space. The space is gone. So, you know, that's like, I could have made a, a list of bullet points on how, how to not make minimal. Okay, one of them could be fill up the space. That's like a line item on my list somewhere. And I'm just blowing the sound out. And you know what? I'm going to put that syncopated clap back in because I like it. I have another variation on this pattern, which is like crazy fill. And I'm layering. All right, this is a crappy drum set. I just was like, what kind of crappy drum sound can I throw on top of this to make it like more noisy and well, that filling in more space? Well, me of another point about minimal is yeah. that one, one of the important things about minimal when there's only three sounds, they got to be really quality sounds because they got to, I mean, if, we're, sure. if you're, goal was to make quality minimal you've really got to put a lot of focus and energy on the quality of those sounds whereas whereas making techno about the sequences and the patterns and the and all the counterpoint between the relationships the sounds start to take a, a back seat and it, the composition sounds always got to be good but mm. when you've got a very naked track where there's just three sounds, they got to be three really, really good sounds to grab your attention. And and so right. you just made all the sounds crappy. You can't have a decent <laughs> minimal. You can't I have just a made all this out. But this isn't this isn't crappy. This is just an, it's oh, I like another it. aesthetic. I like it yeah, it's, I know. It's, right. it's, it's it takes dirty the, and crazy. Space, yeah. And then you know, I would even like. All right. So I was playing around with this like old DM. This just this DMX drum machine. Uh, preset here but it's not exactly making me happy right now it's just already too many sounds to be minimal let's play with uh, sound effects on this oh, you put some delay on it it's already so confusing 
Right. Well, I'm gonna try to stay away from adding too much, like smearing the time around. I'm gonna work more on tone. So I just put a, a chorus on it. One of my favorite things about this Ableton Live chorus is it's got a multiplier for the rate. You can start to do like audio rate modulation, which is amazing. Too much change, too quickly, not minimal. Right. Even, you could have gone back to three songs and already broken that rule. I'm going to try and bring this up into a higher rate, uh, make it not a bass line anymore. Let's see what it sounds like as like a, a mid-range or higher frequency element. Now, it, now it's taking your attention. Now you're just in your head space. That's, that's anti-minimal. What? What's going on here? I mean, this is pulling. not minimal at all. <laughs> Except in... Headbanger shit. All right, I'm just curious. Well, I'm going to turn all the effects off and see. All, right, all the effects are off. Is it still... It's still not minimal with the effects off, right? It's clean. It, it's, it's more I, minimal. It, it's more minimal. It's less maximal. Yeah. It's it's minimal in the adjective sense, but uh, it still wouldn't pass as a minimal track. All right. All right, you keep talking but you about filled up all the space. All the I space filled up is all gone. the space yes. is filled up. I'm gonna yep. fill up even more space with some space. It's got a rave breakdown. Minimal tracks don't have a breakdown. Great, great DJ tool. Wait, we wow. need some fist pumping. That was one sound. One sound. And effects. And it was not minimal. Because it filled up all the space, and it was a lot of sound. There's the train wreck. <laughs> I was like trying to figure out, I need a better fill. Maybe no, we just, just let's put in all the kick drums. I think someone in the chat earlier was like 16 note kick drums. Okay, here's nothing but. <laughs> all right, so we're hardcore now. We just went from like plink plonk to like uh, ballistic. It doesn't. It doesn't take much, does it? No, I don't think so. It uh, it's like little. You know, it was the effects. It was like the attitude. Totally not minimal. Thing. Can, I think we're succeeding. You can break it so easy. Yes. It, I think it. I think this is a great demonstration of like how incredibly narrow and specific minimal is. It, right. It's so it's so confining. It's such a box, and there's a there's a kind of like a, you know Japanese beauty in that that you that kind of Zen kind of you've got this one sound. How awesome can you make this one sound? Can you actually mm -hmm. keep people's attention and keep people in? interested in that one sound right if if that's what you're into you could uh, you know you could get into making minimal but for most of us we get bored working on one sound for the eight hours it takes to get well, that awesome sound i was just i was just space i was just thinking of something but um i'm gonna hold that thought and right there let's just take a little bit of a moment to uh acknowledge once again the chat of course but also who we are and what we're doing here. Of course, this is uh, 343 Labs, 343 TV. My name is John Selway. This is Selway's Techno Saturdays. And, um, you know, we're streaming here almost every day at approximately the same time, usually one o'clock. Saturday's my day where we go over techno and techno related things. Um, 343 Labs is a music production school with locations in New York and Berlin. We do online courses. I teach a sound design and synthesis course, uh, synthesis and sound design for producers. Uh, and I also do Ableton Live courses and private lessons. Uh, so if this is something you're thinking about getting deeper into, and uh, you know, I would encourage you to check out our website. Of course, we have the links down here uh, in the below here on YouTube. And uh, you know, check out our website. Follow us here, get subscribed, do the notification thing, give us a like or a dislike. You know, maybe you just really love minimal techno and you think I'm screwing it up today. So just give me a thumbs down. I'm fine with that. Just, you know, 
give us some feedback. And of course, I really appreciate that we've got a good crowd here in the, uh, in the chat. Let's see what you guys have been talking about. Uh, Begonia and Mike are back. Nice to see you guys again. You, uh, Tech House these days is very in your face, almost big room style. Yeah, I think like what they call Tech House now has become something then a little different than what it used to be, right? Tech House er early on when that genre sort of was forming was, you know, more like good house music with cool techno production or something like that, or somewhere in between, like, you know, had a little bit of some minimal elements in it, some house elements, some cool techno elements. Then it, yeah, it kind of went off the rails a little bit as far as what that is but i would say though there's still good music out there that is good like tech house whether it's called that or not um let's see who else has some in interesting uh, comments uh Bernard, uh, tharu says increase the tempo yeah making it faster for sure i mean generally you're not you know your typical kind of minimal grooves are not going to be banging fast and hard so uh of course, you can be fast and not hard. You can be fast, but then it's going to start to sound maybe a little more trancey in a way if it's that fast. So it's going to change the feel of the groove entirely. Definitely not going to be... Yeah. Um, you, I just realized that uh, Jason is, is not in the mix right now, so, but he just said that would also be not be minimal. So sorry, Jason. Well, right now on this scene, your, your audio, mic is not in the mix. Um, yeah, he's going to talk in my ear and distract me now Well, since I've said that. Um, Thanks. Lush Interpolation says, to me, minimalism is the unplugged of techno. That's a, it's an interesting way of looking at it. I mean, for me, unplugged, it's, it's more, it's like when you have unplugged, like acoustic music, you people playing guitars and, and violins and pianos, and they're not having electrical amplification and effects processing, and it sounds organic and open and natural. There's a sense of space in the music because of that. It's not compressed and thick and loud, right? So same thing with like a minimal production. You've got, we were talking about this before, you've got space between the elements uh, and you're playing with that space in uh, subtle ways. Um, and thanks Lush Interpolation for uh, asking for an EP from me. I, I, I think there's, there's got to be one. I've got a bunch of tracks I need to finish. So there's, there's going to be one in the, in the near future. All right. So although I think probably the stuff that'll come out first is going to be more kind of uh, electro stuff for serotonin. That's what I have, have up to bat right now. Um, Podunkton mentions that uh, this whole time that multiplier button has escaped my eye. Yeah, it's a, it's a powerful one. Yeah, doing audio rate modulation with chorusing. It's, it's, it's like what FM does. It's creating new frequencies in the sound. It's really great for hyping up things and making noise and f effects and stuff like that. Um, and okie dokie. Uh, I guess we should get back to the music. Let's bring Jason back onto the scene and let's get off of YouTube. And I'm going to listen to this noise again and see where we should go next. Hmm? All right, everything's muted. Oh, clips, I'm not muted. The clips are off. I'm thinking maybe that's a little too heavy. A little too hardcore, no? What do you think? It's, um, it's good. Yeah, it's good. It's minimal, except, oh, now it's minimal. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's stripped yeah. down. It's like, so I'm just using, you know, it's another really simple thing that people may know about or not know about or forget about is having, you can do intense effects and then balance it with the dry signal so you know this distortion effect has a dry wet so i can have a little bit of aggression mixed in with my clean sound or i can go all the way and just destroy it so i think now if you just made a track where you just played with that it you would could be, it would be minimal even though the kick got intense it's still just that one sound that people are concentrating on but then you bring in other things and I love how like old school 80s this sounds like it totally doesn't fit but I actually like that but that said let's make it a little more uh, interesting there was a reverb on there I was playing around with this is actually uh, this is the first time I tried it this is a uh, Arturia like plate reverb one. it's a DMX alright but let's see what we can do this to make it more 
rugged. Did you have some snare in there? I, th I thought I heard a snare. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Let's just do a regular delay. It doesn't have to be all dubby, just double it. It's already too busy to be normal. I just want to give it some more energy and more brightness and more noise. And there you go. It's about there. energy level. Minimal is minimal energy level. Minimal concentration level. And a lot of change, you know. Got the flange going. There's too much, too much uh, echo on that. Right. I think I like it better without the delay on it, to be honest. It's tight. I don't know, it's still kind of minimal, though. All right, we're, caught, we're talking hybrids now, right? I had a couple other elements that I played with earlier. Let's try out it's, some it's, of those. It's still adjectively minimal, but it's not part of the genre. All right, this is what I came up with earlier, which is similar to where we were just... That's kind of where this, you know, came from, that idea. Uh, but I also had this. What do you think of that sound? It's also like these other accents in the rhythm that you're injecting. You know, minimal is more simplistic about where the groove is. And, and here you are not only filling it up sonically, it's still relatively sonically sparse, but you're accenting different parts of the rhythm. That, that's already not very minimal because it's like, oh, look at all these funky, groovy things we can do with the rhythm. Minimal is like we're going to do one thing with the rhythm. And we're doing two things, three things here. Get busy. It is getting busy. Busy, busy. All right. Now, I'm not sure about this sound. This is almost like a little too... It's really got a lot of attitude. It's taking away the... It's interrupting the, the beat a little bit. But in a way, that's kind of... I like it and I don't like it. It could work. Um, you got to be a good DJ. That's the problem. You got to be a good DJ to play something like See, this. I, think, I really think the minimal trend as a genre kicked off because a lot of kids were coming up and just we only had in the late 90s we had turntables and it took skill and uh, a great way to start is to start with more stripped down tracks and they all came in at the same time and they were like just crazy about let's get stripped down tracks and turn it into a thing mm. because it's a lot it's easier it's easier and, and then when things get more complicated and you have these denser rhythmically complicated things you've got to be a really good dj to mix that in with anything and uh I think sure. that's that's kind of what happened for the minimal trend. Is it there were a lot, I noticed anyway that there were a lot of newbies gravitated toward the minimal trend in the late '90s, whereas the better DJs would pick the one or two really cool minimal tracks and slip them in. Yeah, I would go to parties where people would play for an hour, two hours of nothing but minimal, and there were usually it gets, some. It gets pretty somebody sleepy. Who, I, no, no pro <laughs> would ever do that. No, you know, right. At any, even to this day, no. Well, and no you know, real think, good DJ would want to do that. If you think of a famous DJ that was sort of known predominantly for being coming from this sort of minimal oriented scene, it, you you could pick someone like Ricardo Villalobos, but he would never only play one style the whole night. It would be all. It would be such a journey, right? And a lot of it was also really good house music, I have to say. So just straight up, like the grooves were amazing. Um, no good DJ would do that. I yeah, mean, so, I agree. So it's a, it's a genre and it's a style that has its purpose in the context of of a good DJ performance. It's not something that really anybody, except maybe the DJ themselves, wants to hear two hours of. Right, I agree. 
So <laughs> one of our comments, we have a Facebook comment here. Um, it's too heavy and harsh what I'm doing. I agree. It's a little bit heavy and harsh, but this was a kind of an experiment today. And uh, hopefully you guys are all right with us kind of going all, and you're going along for the ride. Um, oh, you know what? I, I realized I earlier on Lush Interpolation said I want an EP from John Sully called Not Minimal. I missed the second half of his comment uh, based on the magic he's doing here. I'm really glad you think that this is magic. I appreciate that. Um, and... Uh, Someone who's met, who's talking about Alan Parsons project, Mage Prometheus, the EDM genres are quite prescriptive as this is a hobby. I just add any old sound like the Alan Parsons project. I don't know. Maybe do you mean like literally like you're going to sample them? I mean, I think they had some good stuff back then and also really good production. So probably a cool source of, of sample material. Production. Yeah. All right. Um, and, Rudy Giuliani freestyle videos. What kind of that's amazing. Um, uh, Robert Hood, the minimal god. I agree. Actually, um, I I'm gonna switch over here to again. So I I was looking. This is another thing. I don't normally turn to Wikipedia first for my sources of information, but sometimes it comes in handy. And I happen to uh, you know, this is their minimal techno entry. And I there's the reason I like this is there's a couple of cool uh quotes here oh there's richie there's richie <laughs> but yeah here's robert hood djing in 2009 uh and where did he say hood states it sounded great from a production standpoint but there was a jack element in the old structure people would complain that there's no funk no feeling in techno anymore and the easy escape is to put a vocalist and some piano on top to fill the emotional gap i thought it was time for a return to the original underground so yeah he's talking about like keeping things stripped down and raw and having the emotion intact and not relying on too much uh, excessive his, his production. Had the, had the house feel. It oh, absolutely. Yeah. It. Well, whether so it was techno floor, or house or whatever. I mean, okay, now he has that floor did, plan stuff, which is his floor plan stuff is definitely like house, but like from, and from the, from early on, just the, uh, even when he's using like one kick and a couple of percussion sounds and one synth, the groove and the feel of those were just, for me, like, if you want me to completely define minimal as a genre, I'm going to just fall back on, like, what Robert Hood th did then and still does to a point. Because, like, I was heavily inspired by that, for sure. And, I've, I mean, if, some, if any of you have been around long enough with these, with, I would say back on Techno Tuesdays, there's definitely a couple of times where I was working on a groove and someone in the chat was like, that sounds a little bit like Robert Hood. And I'm like, yeah, it happens because I love it so much. Sometimes I just can't help but, like, be influenced by that just sort of subconsciously. Um. But that's kind of well, that different. Was best, that was the best that the genre could be, and that that's because he's not defined by the genre. He's Robert Hood. Well, yeah, he kind of, you know, it, he, he, it, he's it, defining it for a lot of it, people. Him, and then, of course, your the dubby side of it, the basic channel that's kind of playing with space and atmosphere, that's definitely a big part of it, too. Um, and then, you know, Rudy Giuliani Freestyle Video says that funk. And, and, and Daniel Bell, we mentioned Daniel Bell earlier. Uh, I would say like stripping this down, what we're working on here, getting, taking the distortion out of the, the picture and taking the excess reverb and echo and crazy effects and kind of toning it down. And th that's coming more back in the line of that, just stripping it down to the essential elements. And just that. I mean, I could probably work on this a little bit and make us, you know, a more intricate pattern or just that reminded me of the just second that. class of 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 the genre, which the the stuff like Panasonic, the the Sacco stuff. Oh which man! Is, if if the if the sequence is interesting and and like engaging, if if it's uh, off. If it's odd meter or something, mm -hmm. then it could be re repetitious. The sounds are not incredibly engaging, but just the the hypnotism of the of the simplicity of that, and um, that's that's a that's a different thing. You've either you've either got a, a a kind of minimalism where the sounds are really cool and you only need three sounds because the sounds are cool. Right. Then you have a a minimalism where the patterns are so. Like what? What was that? Dan Bell track? Da, 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 da. I mean, you know, it. You've got to have the right sequence 
otherwise it's just plain boring. I'm looking but, for some old Seiko or Sako kind of stuff that's sort of... You hear that? It's kind of fast. But fast, I call it fast and minimal, huh? Anyway, everybody can see what I'm listening to here. It's, uh, actually, you can't. It's just a black screen. But there it is. This album, Metri, so amazing. Talk about minimal. It's like 808s and bleeps the whole time. Then it's amazing. Good, good, good minimal is really hard. Crappy minimal is really easy. It's the easiest thing you could possibly make. I agree. Anyway, here's the here's the track list for the album that I just threw on real quick. But this is amazing. And it's a different kind of groove. It's not that kind of Detroit funk or Chicago kind of jacking groove. This is like super fast forward, speeding through space kind of minimal, I would say. And I probably, you know, nowadays... Let's pause on that. Nowadays, like, as far as, like, the kind of techno that's sort of more on the underground side that people are really getting into has a little bit more to do with that, what we were just listening to, where it's just kind of like these, like, fast kind of... It's hypnotizing, and it's less about funk and more about forward motion and atmosphere. So, I don't know, maybe that's a subject for another uh, episode in the future, because I definitely like that stuff, too. It's... uh it's fun to play with minimal elements with that kind of a feeling. Um, I think you should you should keep up this series, John, focused on like uh, the adjectives of that people use, the words they use to describe technos, and uh, w where those feels come from, and and how that's more important than genre titles, which are really marketing tools. Yeah. And um, because in in I've never heard a genre title that didn't have good tracks in it. Uh, but that's because the track was good, not because the genre right. itself was worth anything. So and I think Minimal is a perfect example. Tech House is another, and Trance is God. That's we go on and on about that because we'll, Trance is just hypnotism, right? And uh, good techno <laughs> should be hypnotic, right? Does that make a trance music? No, no. no you what? can have. Uh, you can definitely have. Uh, um hypnotic music that's not trance i feel like trance is a word that was stolen like that should that's another one that should never have been a genre because like what people call trance now is so not trance inducing at least to me it's just like melodies and melodies and melodies and melodies and and song arrangements and vocals and tremendous crescendos and breakdowns and drops and all of that it's like too much sometimes i mean okay it can be good i don't want to generalize too much sometimes i know a good song or a good track when i hear it regardless of genre but uh, for me if you want to be in a trance you want repetition you want hyp hypnotism and you want minimalism actually is more likely to put you in a state of hypnosis and trance than what they call trance anyway that's my and, little and, and going back to minimal <laughs> that, yeah and we were talking about tech house and minimal Tech house is a term that never should happen. You know, the techno should have a house feel to it, and what? it's only because it's only because the techno got so far away from that feel that they had to say, "Oh, well, well we put it back in, and mm -hmm. it's kind of minimal, so we're going to come up with a new genre name and call it tech house." It's, it was totally unnecessary. Just make, just make good techno, and you don't need a that the term. just make good techno. That's what we're about <laughs> here. Now, let, I'm going to stop you there. We're almost out of time, but we got to wrap a couple things up. Um, Bye, everybody. Hey, don't nice say goodbye here. yet. You're not done oh. yet. All right, I'm just saying I'm, we're going to wind it down now because we're in the, in the last legs. Um, let's see. Paul Vanderwerf uh, asked, how did I make the DX7 sounds? And it's, that's that Arturia DX7V, which I would like, I think it's already in the chat, but to announce the winner of the Arturia DXV plugin today, Regina Siller. Congratulations. Very glad that you got your hands on that really cool plugin. Uh, so, and yeah, that's what I was using to make some of these sounds here, uh, today. Um, and another thing that is really important to mention is that tomorrow, let's get Jason out of the picture. Sorry. Tomorrow we have a new, uh, episode here on 343 TV. We have Ariel Burijov, uh, doing his mixing monthly. So this is the first in a new series happening monthly. So definitely do come and check that out tomorrow all right so once again 
or actually not. Yeah, once again, here we are at the end of the show. I want to say thanks to everyone uh, for who joined in today. I want to thanks to everyone in the chat and uh, I want, uh, congratulations to the winner of our giveaway. Apologies sort of for the earlier uh, technical issues. I have no idea what happened. It's, I'm going to have to do like a post broadcast analysis to check over my technical situation and see why that happened. I don't ever want that to happen again. And uh, anyway, today was a little bit of a freestyle uh, experiment, you know, having Jason come in and talk about how not to make minimal techno just as a way to get that discussion started and to think about, you know, what minimal means in terms of techno and some little history about it, some different perspectives about it and some, you know, compositional thoughts as well as sound design sort of concepts about, you know, you know, just for example, starting with that simple dry 808 beat and distorting the heck out of it. It went from not, you know, fairly minimal and stripped down to ballistic and blowing your speakers out, which just doesn't feel minimal anymore, right? So, uh, and then the idea of, you know, the different ways things can be minimal, whether it's the sound design or the composition and the use of space and so on. So yeah, really, this was a way to start this discussion and uh, not necessarily a way to diss on minimal or to, you know, anything like that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed our conversation today and a little bit of music making uh, together with Jason. Uh, glad you all uh, were here. Next week, um, going to be more on the arranging tip. I might take, you know, some of the ideas from this, some of the ideas from the last couple of shows. We'll see. And, uh, but anyway, you'll get a Pretty soon we'll get a specific uh, title for the show and, and a concept. But generally, you know, every four, I have four episodes I go through. The first one is usually focusing in on a plugin or a instrument. The second one is more about genre, which is today, right? Uh, the third in, in the cycle is generally something to do with arranging. And then uh, the fourth, I will usually... Uh, it's Techno Friends, and I will I will invite a guest to come in, similar to what we did today, but a little you know more less about production and more about the the interview and the hangout in the chat. So, uh, thanks again, and uh, for ev for myself and everyone else at Three Four Three Labs, uh, thanks for being here. I'll see you next time. Adios. <laughs>